so today we will be discussing about the introduction to python so what exactly or what are all the things which are available inside python if you are able to see in python we got values we got variables we got functions we got class and objects and even we got libraries so now if you are able to look on library so libraries are made up of all the four elements so now in order to so how a variable is made so now the sequence order is like this so so the values what exactly meant by your values is anything like you can say your value 1.2 or uh, you can make it as hello or i can say it as bpec or i can say it as 10 or i can say it as 20 all this going to be called as your values so this values need to be stored in a very simple example now uh, I, I shot an image that image need to be saved with a specific name so now the image contains some value so that value need to be stored for example you are creating uh, a word document you are writing a lot of information so now in order to hold that particular word document in your system you want to store it with a specific name we call it as variable so the variable purpose is to hold the values so now in python so whenever you are going with a python it is a programming language so programming language in the sense if you go to your english language there is a grammar means you need to use a full stop you need to use a comma in the similar way now in order to use any characters means like if you are trying to create a value like alphabetical uh, values if you want to create or we call this alphabetical characters as string we call them as string and if there is a value with information like uh, 1.2 or 5.2 or etc we call them as float so this is the data type of your value if there is a value like 10 20 kind of thing so we call the what is the data type of this value we call the data type as integers so now these are the three different types of data type so now value uh, comprises of three types like string float and a integer so in order to store this value with a specific name we are going with a variables so this names name of the variable we call if you are able to give any name for a variable we call that name as identifiers So we call it as identifiers so the purpose of identifier is to have a unique name for example i'm storing all this information called as test so i'm giving a name as test or there are values related to your marks i'm giving that variable name as marks or i, I got uh, information about uh, the pay scales of a student so i can store all the values as a pay scale so the variable is called as the unique name so now after variable by using this values are stored inside a variable so for example let's take mean or let's take your uh, you collected uh, 10 people salary and you store inside a variable called it a salary now you want to perform a function what is a function is to perform a specific task to perform specific task so in order to perform specific task i can go with a function so what is the specific task you are trying to perform i want to calculate i collected 10 people's salary stored into a variable called as salary of a data scientist so i want to know what is the minimum salary so what is the minimum salary what is the minimum amount of salary we collected so minimum is a function so the purpose of a function is to perform a specific task and after having a function so before we are getting into class and objects if you are able to look on any programming language or even in our phones now i want to send a money what is the amount of money you want to send i want to send a money let's imagine thousand rupees so that is value so to whom you want to send which is a variable so i want to send it to person an x which is a variable so how you want to send this x so using your imps or upi so upi or imps transfer so which is going to be your function so the purpose of function is to perform a specific task so now in lines of your uh, python why python is very popular and uh, is like why it is pretty famous is because of the huge amount of libraries your python comprises of so now here we call it as libraries so libraries are called as set of functions 
so libraries are called as set of functions we call it as libraries in a very simple note i want to send the money so from where i'm doing the money like upi or imps i'm using a library called as your google pay i'm using google pay or i'm using phone pay or i'm using my bank uh, app so which is a library so these libraries are created with the help of class and object so i'm not touching what is a class and object right now i'll be explaining about class and object in our uh, upcoming classes once we completed user defined commands there i explain a detailed explanation of class and object so every libraries are created with the help of class and objects so this is the overall so uh, structure of your python programming so your python comprises of this five elements so values variables functions class and objects and your libraries so now what are the different libraries we have at what level of python knowledge we want to get it out of uh, the entire program as a data scientist is very important let's understand about it so now uh, for getting hands on means like in order to get into data science or in order to get into your um, data science fields one of the very important element is you want to get a very good hands on on your programming so programming is more like your uh, game like a pubg or like uh, using your excel sheet the more time you spend practicing the better you can be an expert in python programming if you are spending a least amount of time in python means like practicing not listening so you are able to get a very weak knowledge or a very less confidence so the only key in order to master python is every day you need to invest time at least 10 minutes at least 5 minutes if you are able to invest it every day you need to type it every day you need to fix the errors every day you need to learn new topics in programming only then i think you feel more comfortable and more easy with python so python is more more like a game as i said so if you are able to spend more time yes you are able to get a better uh, knowledge on top of it so now in python there are, i bifurcated the entire agenda into three parts so first is like a building block so in order to get a huge knowledge on top of python means like in order to get a hands on so we need to learn about inbuilt data structures like list tuple dictionary set so now we don't there is nothing like a specific example or a use case or a project on list so it's just like a building blocks just to understand your python to get a hands on we will be learning about inbuilt data structures and these are very important to perform task and even the task to be performed customized for example i want to do a task for 100 times i will be going with the loops so i want to perform a task for a based on a condition so i want to perform a loop for example uh, until uh, a person uh, is able to get 100 marks or uh, for example i want to give a condition like until a person is male i just want to run this loop for 100 times so running it based on a specific condition so we can go with while loop so if you want to run a loop with a condition while loop without a condition you will be going with a for loop so now apart from the loops you have conditional statements means like if a person is able to get this much amount of marks then we need to send it to him for this particular round if a person is able to get this much amount of salary we need to check this level of civil score and then we need to approve a loan so we call them as conditional statements in that you have types if statement if else statement if else statement this kind of thing and apart from it to create a user defined functions if you are able to see there is a user defined functions the purpose of user defined function is used to create your own function to perform your own specific task for that reason we can go with user defined functions then we have a regular expressions dealing with your uh, numbers or alphabets or special characters we can go with regular expressions so escape sequences lambda expressions we call it as same user defined but one liner commands or anonymous functions we call it as lambda string manipulations we discuss all this so all this commands major purpose is to get a basic hands on to get a confidence on top of your programming so this is very important for uh, this is a beginner level and this is very important for every learner he can be a non programmer he can be from any industry this is very important any level of experience this zone is very important to get a very good hands on on python once you got a very good hands on so next we need to learn about these are the libraries which we specifically use in data science as a data scientist we try to use pandas so the purpose of pandas library is to uh, perform excel operations so the purpose of pandas library is to perform 
excel operation so whatever excel operations you are doing like importing the data cleaning the data pivoting the data or uh, calculating the mean all the excel operations you can do it with pandas so now numpy all metrics multiplication operations so for example you want to multiply the metrics you want to add it all the metrics operations you can do it with numpy so when you are dealing with images i think numpy is one of the important library we need to use it and matplotlib this is used for visualizations matplotlib seaborn they are used for visualizations in order to perform visualizations like histogram bar plot all this matplotlib scikit-learn is used for all your machine learning operations so now i want to create a machine learning algorithm scikit-learn library i want to test my model scikit-learn library so now tensorflow and keras are used for deep learning i will be explaining what is machine learning and deep learning in our classes no need to worry and nltk is used for natural language toolkit natural language toolkit so the purpose of nltk library is to handle natural language like text data so the primary use is for the text type of data you can use nltk library and once you created all your models you want to create some ui kind of thing like someone can interact like a website so you will be going with streamlet for deployment you are able to see in order to deploy your applications you are going with your streamlit library so these are very simple and easy so it's not like this kind of uh, uh, command so you may be finding a bit difficult at this zone but uh, even though if any of the non-programmers are finding difficulty at this zone i think this zone going to be more easy for them more uh, simple it's more like your excel sheets it's all about remembering the commands and doing it so simple straightforward one line commands so everyone find it more easy at this uh, zone so people who are working as a data scientist or planning to be a data scientist so you need to work on this zone as well as you need to work on this zone which is very important apart from it if any of the learners are planning towards ai career transition or ai things and if the, any of the people are pure freshers means who are 2021 20, passed out or 2022 20, passed out so it is suggestible to learn this advanced topics so now i said class and object comes into the concept of the class and object comes into the concept of oops concept if there are any freshers 2021 20, passed out or 2022 20, passed out it's better for them to uh, study this oops concept freshers need to study this oops concepts and uh, it, if this advanced data structures and algorithms is an optional for uh, freshers or for data science so this advanced data structures and algorithms need to be prepared by web developers or software developers so software developers or web developers need to have the knowledge about data structures and algorithms so in order to know data structures and algorithms you need to have the knowledge about discrete mathematics like logic like conditional statements if statements comes into that number theory like calculating a leap year so for example if someone is typing a leap year our program need to say whether it is a leap year or not for that again number theory knowledge is required probability what are the chances of getting a job if you want to write it down with the help of coding uh, probability knowledge is required graph theory if you want to write down a program to identify the shortest route graph theory and if you want to write down a computer program for a uh, for example for a particular bank what going to be my amount of uh, uh, amount which i deposited or fd after next five years so i will be going with uh, recurrency that going to happen and counting how many candidates can crack interview if we are conducting a recruitment drive for that counting so this comes into the concept of discrete mathematics knowledge is very important in order to work on data structures and algorithms and apart from it some more advanced concepts like iterators decorators exemption handling or your uh, multi-threading all this uh, you can just focus on in lines of your advanced uh, python knowledge or advanced uh, concepts of python so in order to master your python journey yes Yes, this is the beginning this is how you need to start with so if you are able to prepare this if you are planning for data science career or a data analytic career so prepare on this libraries not all for data analytics 
So pandas, numpy, matplotlib is required for data science people, all the libraries. And uh, this is important for all the learners. So uh, this is a very simple uh, mind map as well as an agenda what to be prepared. If you are finding difficulty, no need to worry. Hold on for a couple of days and uh, get into this library. So you may find it simple and easy in case that one means like user defines and all that is struggling you. Get into this one it makes your entire learning curve more simplified and more easy so um, uh, we will be catching up on next video so with other topics thank you so much